gaming laptops with Nvidia's new RTX 4080 laptop GPU are expensive, but they might actually offer better value compared to the best from last gen, the RTX 3080 Ti. Both the RTX 3080 Ti and RTX 4080 laptop GPUs have the same amount of CUDA cores, but the newer 4080 clocks higher. Last year's 3080 Ti actually has more GDDR6 memory capacity and a bigger memory bus with more memory bandwidth, but the 4080's memory speed is higher. The 4080 can run with lower power limits, which is why we're seeing it in smaller and thinner laptops this year, but they both max out at 150 watts. Technically, they can both go right up to 175 watts, which is the case with both of the laptops that I've tested. There is a small 10 watt difference between these specific laptops at the lower end, but this shouldn't be enough to affect our conclusions. Both laptops have Intel HX CPUs, however the RTX 4080 is paired with a newer 13th gen chip with more cores and faster memory. That's just a legitimate platform difference between 2022 and 2023 gaming laptops. So some of the performance difference will be due to this, but that's also just the way it is. Both laptops were tested with Windows 11 22H2 fully up to date, core isolation off, resizable bar enabled, with the same Nvidia driver and an external screen, so no Optimus bottleneck. Let's get straight into the 25 game comparison at three different resolutions. Then after that we'll compare price difference, cost per frame value, and content creation performance. Let's start out with a Plague Tale Requiem, which I've found to be quite GPU heavy. I've got the 1080p results down the bottom, 1440p in the middle, and 4k up the top, with the RTX 3080 Ti below the RTX 4080. The game still played fine on both laptops at 1440p max settings, but the 4080 was reaching a 39% higher average frame rate, though the difference in the dips in performance shown by the 1% lows was much smaller. I've also tested this game with DLSS enabled, both with and without Nvidia's new frame generation feature, which is only available for RTX 40 series GPUs. At 1440p, both laptops were reaching a 30% higher average FPS with DLSS on quality mode compared to themselves without DLSS on in the previous graph. However, turning on frame generation was able to boost the frame rate an additional 50% on top of this. Regardless of how you feel about these fake frames, in a single player story based game like this, I've only found this feature to be a positive. Cyberpunk 2077 was just shy of the magical 60 FPS sweet spot at 1440p ultra settings on the 3080 Ti laptop, while the 4080 was able to deliver a 30% higher average frame rate. Neither game was running particularly well at 4K, but we've also got features like DLSS and FSR to improve this. Here's how Cyberpunk looks with DLSS on quality mode. However, I've also used the highest ray tracing ultra preset this time. At 1440p, there's again a similar 31% boost with the 4080 compared to the 3080 Ti when both laptops are using DLSS, but enabling frame generation is where things change. Even the 1% low from the 4080 with frame gen on is higher than the average FPS without it, and frame generation made 4K max settings with ray tracing actually usable, while still looking fine in the area I was testing in. Dead Space had a below average difference out of the 25 games games tested, with the 4080 coming out 25% ahead of the 3080 Ti at 1080p, 26% ahead at 1440p, and 18% at 4K, with even smaller differences in the 1% lows, a trend we'll see throughout the testing. The 3080 Ti was still able to deliver above 60 FPS at 1440p max settings, but were able to boost average FPS by an extra 41% simply by turning on DLSS. The 4080 was now 25 5% ahead of the 3080 Ti with DLSS on, and like most, this game doesn't have frame generation support, so there's no extra boost possible for the 4080. Marvel's Spider-Man Remastered is a CPU heavy game, so the differences seen here are some of the lowest out of all games tested. I should also note that we had a fair amount of instability in this game on the 13th gen laptop that randomly came and went, so not sure if this is a problem with the extra e-cores or something. Turning on DLSS 
thus barely changed the results on both laptops at 1080p and 1440p, which I suspect is because we're limited by the CPU, despite both laptops having Intel's top-end HX chips. This game has frame generation support, and turning that on was able to offer an extra improvement at 1080p and 1440p resolutions, as it's able to boost even CPU limited games. For some reason though, frame generation enabled at 4K actually ended up slightly worse compared to just using regular DLSS without frame gen. I double checked the results and confirmed it. It might be a bug with this specific game. The Witcher 3 was tested with its next gen update, and as the frame rate was stupid high, I chose to test with the ray tracing preset enabled to see what these GPUs can do. FSR was set to quality mode, as it enabled that by default. And well, based on some of these frame rates, even with FSR upscaling, it looks like we might want to lower down from quality mode. For some reason, both laptops were limited to about 30 FPS at 4K. Not sure if that's some limit of FSR or what the deal was. Call of Duty was tested with the game's benchmark, and we're looking at a 34% higher average FPS with the RTX 4080 laptop at 1080p and 1440p resolutions. Like the others, this game could also be boosted with upscaling features like DLSS, though the rest of our results won't feature DLSS or FSR, as it already takes days to get through 25 games of testing, so I can't use it on all of them. Apex Legends was tested in the firing range for reproducible results, and while the FPS numbers might not mirror actual gameplay, they still show us that the RTX 4080 laptop was about 30% faster at 1080p and 1440p resolutions. The gap gets smaller at 4K though, with the 4080 20% ahead, but honestly, if you're playing competitively, you're probably not going to be running 4K max settings anyway. The same goes for Fortnite. The new Epic setting preset was quite tough even on the RTX 4080 laptop, with 1440p only just able to squeeze out 60 FPS, a 31% lead compared to the last gen RTX 3080 Ti laptop. Again, like a lot of other games, this could be further boosted by features like DLSS. Microsoft Flight Simulator had one of the smaller differences at 1080p, as it's fairly CPU heavy, with the 4080 just 17% faster than the 3080 Ti. The 4080 was able to come out 29% faster at the higher 1440p resolution though, as the GPU is better utilised, while 4K saw a higher 32% boost with the 4080. This game is one of the few with frame generation support though, so the 4080 is absolutely capable of much more than this. Red Dead Redemption 2 was tested with the game's benchmark, and at 4K, the 4080 had its second biggest win over the 3080 Ti out of all 25 games tested, with a 32% higher average frame rate. The only game that had a bigger difference was Metro Exodus Enhanced, with the highest extreme preset, likely because this enables ray traced reflections, making it extra hard on the GPU. Despite the 4080's 37% lead, 33 FPS isn't exactly amazing. But again, there are of course lower setting levels that will perform better. I'm just intentionally using max settings as they're generally more GPU bound, which is ideal for a GPU comparison, rather than actually playing. Halo Infinite felt a bit choppy at 4K ultra settings on the 3080 Ti. The 4080 was definitely better, but the dips in performance shown by the 1% lows were noticeable to me with occasional stuttering, so I wouldn't recommend this resolution at max settings, even if the 4080 was 30% better. You've probably heard that 30% number thrown out enough times now, so rather than individually talk through the rest of the 13 games tested, I'll just quickly skip through the rest of the results on screen now so we can focus on more important details. Feel free to pause the video if you want a closer look at any of these results. Every time I do this, I kind of wonder why I spend so many days testing 25 different games just to show the results for such a short amount of time, but I think it allows me to have a much more accurate average result that better represents a wider selection of games. In other words, more data equals more better. 
On average, over all 25 games tested, at 1080p, the RTX 4080 laptop GPU was about 29% faster when compared to the RTX 3080 Ti laptop GPU. As we can see, results really vary and depend on the specific game. The two games at the top both had ray tracing effects applied, so they're more GPU heavy, while others down the bottom like Far Cry 6, Spider-Man, Rainbow Six, and Flight Simulator are more CPU bound titles. So there's less of a difference at this lower resolution going to a higher tier GPU. Stepping up to the higher 1440p resolution, and the RTX 4080 laptop now had a slightly larger 31% lead when compared to last year's RTX 3080 Ti. Best case, we're looking at a 39% boost in our most GPU heavy games, while others that are more CPU demanding like Spider-Man saw just an 18% boost, which may be more due to the difference going from 12900HX to 13950HX. HX processor. The RTX 4080 laptop was 27% ahead of the 3080 Ti at the highest 4K resolution. The Witcher 3 was the only outlier here, but otherwise, we're not seeing that much of a difference percentage wise compared to the lower resolutions tested. None of these results factor in DLSS or frame generation, which, as we saw earlier, would give much higher perceived boosts. Here's how frame rates look if we instead take the average of all 25 games at all resolutions at max settings. I think this better allows us to visually see how much better the 4080 laptop is in a quick and easy summary. Normally the difference is biggest at 4K in a GPU comparison, but it's the smallest here. And I'm wondering if we're starting to see the 12 gig VRAM limit of the 4080 appearing. Just before we compare prices, let's check out a few content creator workloads. It's not all just about gaming. We're looking at a bigger performance gap in Blender, with the RTX 4080 scoring 51% higher in the classroom test and 75% higher in the monster test, though a smaller 24% improvement in the junk shop test. There's a 43% boost in the V-Ray CUDA test with the RTX 4080. Not bad at all considering both GPUs have the same amount of CUDA cores, so goes to show what other generational improvements offer. While the ray tracing test was scoring 33% higher on the 4080, DaVinci Resolve was just 7% better with the RTX 4080, though unlike the last two tests, the processor plays more of a role here. So some of this difference could also be simply from going from Intel 12th to 13th gen. Let's discuss the price difference next. The prices of both of these laptops will of course change over time, so refer to updates with the links below the video. Or check out my website gaminglaptop.deals to get the best deal on your next laptop. At the time of recording, Lenovo's Legion 7i gaming laptop with RTX 3080 Ti graphics and 12900HX processor goes for $3200 US dollars. Razer's Blade 18 with RTX 4080 on the other hand starts from $3800, or $600 more money. So is it worth it? From a cost per frame perspective, the RTX 4080 in the Blade 18 is offering better value at all resolutions. It's worth noting that the Legion was on sale too, so at a higher price without the sale, the 3080 Ti would be even worse value. And when not even accounting for the fact that Razer laptops are generally more expensive compared to most other brands. Though things could of course be different with a cheaper 3080 Ti laptop. There are much cheaper ones than this, but likewise I would also expect cheaper 4080 options. The Blade is a premium product, and as a result, I'd expect it to be one of the higher options. Don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that RTX 4080 laptops are cheap. And honestly, most people would be just fine spending less money on something else. Whether that be an RTX 4070 or below, which come out later this month, or last gen 30 series, which still offers good performance. But compared to the best from last gen, the RTX 3080 Ti, the 4080 is giving a decent uplift relative to the extra cost. But hey, maybe when you're spending more than 3000 US dollars on a gaming laptop, you don't care too much about the value anyway. Personally, I think the newer features on offer with RTX 40 series, like DLSS3 frame generation, are a nice extra. At least in supported games, which at the start of 2023 is only 17 titles I believe. But as nice as it may be, it's difficult to recommend anyone buy something in hopes that a feature will gain more traction in future. There just aren't any guarantees. 
If you've already got a decent gaming laptop from the RTX 30 series that can play all your games fine, there's no real reason to upgrade. It's really worth upgrading between single generations of hardware. And if you're not struggling to run modern games on what you've got, then there's no real point considering the 4080. And hey, I am making this video right as the RTX 4080 laptops launch. So it is completely possible that 3080 Ti laptops go on sale and cost even less money than I'm showing here. But yeah, the point is there's no real reason trading in your wallet unless you really want the best. You can check out all of the new gaming laptops with RTX 4080 graphics over here next. And I'll be comparing plenty more 40 series laptops as soon as I can. So make sure that you're subscribed for all of that upcoming content.